we've got Debbie uh, uh, Nabi Arampo right now, medical doctor. The reason why I lo want, ha love having her on is she can help us with these open-ended issues. Doctor, the most obvious being uh, the cancer that she has. We don't know, and much like her father-in-law, the king, uh, we know he has cancer. Uh, we just don't know specifically what type. So it makes it hard kind of getting a sense of the treatment plan for the princess. But what do you make of this uh, chemotherapy regimen that she's on right now? Sure. So they're using the term preventative chemotherapy. I think looked at, looking at the context that they're probably talking about adjuvant chemotherapy, which is where, you know, maybe the cancer has been addressed, but you're trying to prevent it from recurring. Or if you've had surgery and some of the cells that the surgeon can't see because they're microscopic have maybe spread to other parts of the body, but you want to root them out, get rid of them before they can grow into separate cancers. So I think that's what she's referring to when she says preventative. Uh, it, it's fairly common for some of these cancers. I think going back to what you were saying about not revealing what type of cancer, there could be other reasons too. I mean, this is a royal family where people look at every generation. And with cancer, there can right. often be genetic components, family history. So it's possible that if this is a type of cancer that can be spread genetically or it has genetic links and markers, that she doesn't want her children to be subjected to even more scrutiny than they already are. Now, um, if, we, if you don't know exactly what type of cancer she has, and, and we know that she was being treated for the better part of two weeks for stomach-related ailments, and that covers a, a wide area, but you immediately start fearing the most extreme type cancers or the most worrisome ones for women, that would be ovarian cancer, there are certainly others. Um, wh what do you think, and, and, and about the regimen that she's on and whether that will be effective and what it might signal? So I usually think about these things in a couple different ways. Uh, first, she's very young, so it's unusual for people to get cancer at that age, although the numbers have been rising pretty, pretty steadily since 1990. Uh, I think, you know, the other thing is you wonder if somebody has some other predisposition. So I mentioned genetics, but if someone has a chronic disease, let's say inflammatory bowel disease, where they are getting treatment for that, you know, over the course of time, and then suddenly they develop cancer, that's another factor that can affect the prognosis, you know, if, if they have another chronic condition that they're fighting. Uh, when I think about the abdomen, I usually think about, well, what else is in there? So we think about gastrointestinal, the gastrointestinal system, that's your stomach, your intestines, uh, the liver. You can also think about the reproductive system, which is in there, like, like you were mentioning, the ovaries, the uterus. And then we talk about the GU system. So that's the kidneys and the ureters and the bladder. But you think about everything that's in there. And then you think about, okay, could something spread uh, locally? How aggressive is it? Could it spread further? And then you think about right. the treatment in terms of that. So if it's pretty localized, people usually have surgery and then they may have other things to supplement that. But if it's spread further, okay. then you need to do something that will address the cancer potentially that might have spread to other parts of the body or throughout the abdomen. Doctor, thank you very much. We'll continue monitoring the situation with the princess. I'll keep you posted on any further developments or updates. The, uh, uh, the monarchy is, is, is passing along. Speaking of... Uh,